Hello for the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Using the first reading and the gospel reading, the first reading, Old Testament, Numbers 11, 25 to 29, and Mark 9th chapter 38 to 43. And it all has to do with, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, that the success in the church is not totally dependent upon the disciples and the apostles. But the success is dependent upon the Spirit of God. That the Spirit was and is primarily and moves others in the world. It's not the official title. It's the Spirit in people and often mundane people or common people. And we see that in those two readings. In the first reading from the book of Numbers, uh, Moses prays and asked the Spirit of God to become and come upon 70 of the elders, 70 of the people. And they do. But lo and behold, there's two others that are influence with the spirit it seemed like the same spirit a problem they don't belong to that group and it's right there in the first reading it said the spirit came to rest on Eldad and Maydad these two guys well that was a problem because they weren't the official ones the one of the or two of the 70 special ones. So when a young man quickly told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, Joshua, son of Nun, who from his youth had been Moses' aide, said, Moses, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses said to Joshua, are you jealous? What am I saying? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets. Would that the Lord might bestow his spirit on them all. Here these two know-nothings, simple people, were doing the same thing. And I think in our life, that really should resonate. There are simple, good people doing wonderful things. Well, the same thing, sort of. In, in, the, in the gospel reading, Jesus calls the apostles and uh, 12 apostles and the 72 disciples and all these official people. And even comes into today's world where there's not only these apostles or bishops, but there's cardinals and there's deacons and priests and, you know, uh, Eucharistic ministers, all these official people. But And they're good, do a good job. But the Spirit also works in small people, unimportant people. And that's what's happening in the gospel. The uh, disciples there, you know, um, John in particular, John goes and he says to Jesus, teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name. And we try to prevent him because he does not follow us. He's not in our group. Jesus replies, he says, don't prevent him. There is no one who performed a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus, can work in not just the official people, but the small people. In fact, don't you feel sometimes that the Many people, small people, unimportant people, are better than I am. That you think that about yourself? They're they might not, they're not Catholic. Or they're not even Christian. In fact, they might not even believe in God. And they wind up doing unbelievably deep spiritual things. And Jesus tries to point that out to these official men that he has chosen. And then he brings in the smallest. He says, oh, for whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives a, you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, 
Amen, I say to you, you, he will not lose his reward. I think we all, especially the higher we are and official stuff, the more we ought to think of this. And I think it is very, very true. When I studied in Innsbruck, Austria in 1961 to 65, we had a professor, Karl Rahner, a Jesuit, who he lived from 19, 1904 to 1984. And he has this new theory, which I really buy, and it's called Anonymous Christian. In other words, anonymous, they don't know that this, what it's all about. They haven't studied it, and they're not aware of it, and so forth. But they do unbelievably good spiritual things. And to summarize it quickly, it says, anonymous Christian is the notion introduced by Karl Rahner that, that declares that people who have never heard the Christian gospel are saved through Christ. Never heard of the gospel, but they do Christian things and they're saved through Christ. Even though they're not conscious of Christ or knowledgeable about Christ or schooled in the message of Jesus Christ, they do what Christ did and they're saved. I, I think this is like all good people you and I know. Don't you know people that probably you think are better than you? I do. Better than me. And if they do good things, and if they love their neighbor as herself, hmm, anonymous Christian. If they give money to the poor, hmm, anonymous Christian. If they forgive better than I forgive, better than this Christian. And I believe they are anonymously, they don't know Christ or the whole message, but they do it. And when they do it, he or she is acting like or is doing what Christ himself preached. And that's what happened in the early church. I think it's good to sort of take a little bit of uh, stock on how many really good people that you and I know and what they do. And often they're better than we seem to be or what we think even of ourselves anonymous christian reread that old testament eldad and maydad i like that the two names I, I those guys are good and think of all the people that you know and you know they're good and how does that apply and work out in salvation i really believe when Father Carl Rahner says these are good people these are anonymous Christians and they're just as good and sometimes better than me than you think about it I think Christ sort of acted that way have a good day